No, this is company's room. Uh, company's room. So, so some companies can come and work here, sir. We are providing space to companies also to come and use the facilities. We will we will host 30 companies. 30 companies. 30 companies. 30 companies. These are the rooms. About 20,000 square meters. Uh, multinational we are posting the companies to come and work here and also along with the students the companies also will pay the students won't pay but the companies will pay charges for the use of these instruments yeah, that's what I do I think yeah. we can move on the others are the same repetition of this yeah. 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 so other rooms are same 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 same
it is indeed a pleasure for me to, to welcome our Honorable Chief Guest, Governor of Mizoram, and our Vice Chancellor and the officers and the professors of the university. Today, like what our MC has already stated, it is a day in which we have been looking forward to for a very long time and it has come into fruition today and we are so happy that every one of you are here in our midst. I'll be taking around 10 minutes to give a kind of a glimpse of what the incubation center is all about and I will start off with this, with the genesis of the incubation center. Before I start off with the incubation center, the concept itself, I would like to start with the innovation club of the university beforehand. Because it is the university's innovation club which started off the proposal and the formulation of this project. That was in February 2015, the formulation of this innovation club started under the former vice chancellor. And in 2016, the innovation club started building up the formula and the proposal for the incubation center, which is sent to the DST for sponsorship. The, the coordinator and one of the members, Dr. Shuaya, went to the IIM Ahmedabad for proposal presentation under the DST. There we made the presentation and the budget application for the incubation center. It was communicated there and then itself that the proposal was accepted in total. Because the DST felt the need that the entrepreneurial gap in the Northeast, especially in the Northeast, is felt and the incubation center can do something about this. So we were given the sanction of whatever we are asked for. In June 2017, the first installment of the sanction came and we have started functioning since then. In March 2018, we have started incubating two incubators. They are here, but I will not ask them to stand up. In June 2018, we have officially incorporated a private limited company under our fold. So that is a kind of a milestone for us. The center comes under NIDI Technology Business Incubator and it is the first, it may be the first to be hosted by a central university in the eastern region of India. So we are lucky to have the incubation center here in our university. And it is autonomous in the sense that it is registered as a separate society under the state act. And it is autonomous in its administration and procedures. This is a 10.75 crore project with four trust areas, namely <coughs> mechanical and engineering, we have ICT, we have agriculture and allied, and we have energy. Those are the four prescribed trust areas given to us by the DST to take care of. But having said that, all sectors come under the incubation center. That means we are sector agnostic. All ideas I mean, apart from those four sectors, are most welcome to approach the incubation center. And the incubation center is built up and prepared to host more than 30 incubating companies. What is the operation of the incubation center? The incubation center, the philosophy behind incubation center is to bring an idea or a prototype to a viable business. To take an idea which may be scalable, which may be commercial, that can be taken up to a business, a formal business organization. And to take an idea, we have three fold of three tires of uh, selecting ideas. These are the idea, these are the three folds, which I may not explain. It is there in the bulletin. And what are the facilities given by the incubation center? It's threefold. The first one is to give knowledge. That may be through the academic departments, through R and D of the academic departments, because the university is the host institution for the incubation center. Then apart from that, mentoring and hand-holding is a crucial part of incubation center philosophy. We have mentors from I Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta Innovation Park. And recently we have a tie-up with Thai, the Indus, the Ind US Entrepreneurs Group. They are willing to help us out with the mentoring and the hand-holding for the upcoming startups. Then, apart from that, we'll be having accelerator programs where companies and startups will be mentioning their problems and tailor-made trainings will be organized for them. And apart from that, we'll be organizing study trips to other places where they can learn the skills and the need sets which they have to know. Then, apart from that, we have the infrastructure support like of 
free space. You have seen the space there. We have developed uh, 30 places, I mean 30 seats for companies up there. We have own facilities like printing, printing uh, facilities. We have machines for the four trust areas. And we have the fabrication lab and the 3D rooms. We have the 3D printers, both subtractive and additive. And we have uh, heating chambers where you can develop prototypes. Then apart from that, we have other services like uh, introduction to angel investors. Angel investors are those successful entrepreneurs who want to give back. Uh, we can have a kind of a matchmaking between them, the entrepreneurs and the and angel investors where they can invest their money. Apart from that, we have venture capitalists. Uh, NetFee is one of the biggest uh, venture capitalists we have in the Northeast. They have potential fund. I mean, they can get some potential funds from them. And apart from that, the University Incubation Center is uh, empowered to give seed capital funding to the incubities which is being incubated in the university. We can go up to 50 lakhs for startups. Then the functions. The incubation center functions in threefold. The first one is the day-to-day -day operation taken care of by the incubation team. We have the CEO, the chief executive officer there, Mr. K. C. He is a retired Indian Oil Corporation officer. He has been uh, working with us for the past three months. And we have the incubation center manager, and we have the accounts administrator, and we have the support staff. We have four uh, faculty our staff there in the incubation center. Then apart from that, we have the steering committee. The steering committee consists of faculty members from different departments. Uh, I think I should introduce them. Can you just stand up? That's the, the steering committee members. These are the steering committee members coming from different faculty. Thank you. Then apart from that, we have the Apex Governing Board, where the vice chancellor is the chairman, and we have the finance officer, we have the registrar, we have representation from the DST, we have representation from the industry, and so on. Then about the works which we have already done in the past year, we have organized a two-level, I mean a two-days workshop, national workshop with IAM Ahmedabad EDII Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India and National Institute of National Innovation Foundation. We have organized an entrepreneurship development in e-waste management. Then we have also we have also participated in the North East Accelerator Program there in Guwahati last year. We have funded two trainings two residential trainings, one residential training and one women entrepreneurship training. And apart from that, we have organized the first hackathon in the state where college students were invited to have a two-day residential program. They share their ideas and at the end of the day, they were given prize for best ideas. Then, we also co-partnered with the state government in organizing the Mizoram Taiwan, which is the e-summit entrepreneurship summit and the business plan competition. Those are the things which we have done till date. We have incubated three startups. Uh, we have the Wisdom. They are mobile-based, mobile app-based mobile app retail on food industry. And we have Zonu Meat Processing. They are the only uh, sausage-making uh, industry here in Missouri till date. And I think they're going to have a bigger project with the state government. And we have CME, which is dealing with textiles. And her market is international. So. These three are the present incubators we have, and some more are coming up. We have partners. <coughs> we have the Indian Institute of Management in Calcutta as our, as our partner, a formal partner. And they've been working with us for formulation of the budget, uh, working with the incubation managers and the administrators in giving them training. And they'll be coming up frequently to give mentorship to our incubators. Apart from that, we are the partner institute for the state government <coughs> entrepreneurship development project, MedMoc. And recently, we have signed, we have uh, not yet signed, but we have already the talk has been done with the Mizo, the Zora Mega Food Park, which is uh, a project under the state, I mean the government of India. And recently, we have tied up with Thai, like I said, the Indus Entrepreneurs Group. It is a Silicon Valley based organization, and they are willing to help us with the with the incubations and the mentorship. And apart from that, Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India, Abelabad, has already approached us in working together on bamboo sector. The formal uh, agreement will be signed maybe in a month or so. And apart from that, we are also a part of the 
association of incubation centers all over India. Thank you. Thank you so much, the world leader, coordinator, for your enlightening speech. Brother presentation. Uh, I may now call upon our uh, respected vice chancellor, who needs no introduction. We are we are lucky to have an extraordinary vice chancellor. Uh, I would like to add here. Recent visit to Delhi, you know, he traveled from his hotel to the MHRD office by auto rickshaw. So he's down to our person. I won't have this. <laughs> Good morning everyone, Honorable Excellency, Governor of Mizoram Sri Kumanam Rajshekaranji, the CEO of Mizoram University Incubation Center, Jarmona, the coordinator, Dr. Madina, and treasurer of Incubation Center, Robin, and deans of schools of Mizoram University, heads of the departments, and uh, the scientists who are involved in incubator center, the faculty members, very senior faculty, it's a great pleasure for me to have a very great day of Mizoram University. Any university, either it is a state university or central university, would like to have an incubation center for the benefit of the state and also for the students of any university. We are now having inaugurated the incubation center of Mizoram Universities funded by DSP by Honorable His Excellency Governor of Mizoram. It's a great day and good India of Mizoram University. I congratulate the CEO, coordinator, and other members of the incubation center for your untiring effort in making this uh, true in Mizoram University because it's a dream for me to have this incubation center facility. Sir, Honorable His Excellency, this was a scheme funded by Department of Science and Technology and under the national initiatives for developing harnessing innovations for the young entrepreneurs of the country. Any incubation center has to cater the needs of the people that who are having novel ideas, innovative thinking, and they have to be given a providing a facility at a place where they can work with their ideas. And this similar one, sir, we have one in Kerala. It is the first startup company, first startup training institute in Kerala, in the country, whole country, near Trivandrum or Cochin, it has got. It is the first startup training institute in the country. I, I know that, I never visited. It is one of the very, very well known uh, startup uh, training center in the country, in Kerala, it is there. And we put many people from all the states, they go to Kerala to see this startup uh, training center in Kerala. It was very a famous and eminent institute that there are several hundreds of people got trained in the that startup institute in Kerala. I do not know the exact place where it is located, but it was very famous uh, startup institute in Kerala. So, wherein the students, uh, either different cadres of students like B.Tech, engineering, science and uh, other uh, area of people, they go there and uh, they will be having all comprehensive training facility in that area. And they will get novel ideas and innovative thinking when they have a facility for working in the Tenvira. And they will get novel ideas and those ideas they will implement there and they work there for some time and they get some kind of new ideas to be generated. That is how actually we call them as any entrepreneurs. These any entrepreneurs will have idea for starting some industry or some organization, some institute with their novel ideas. This is actually we call as uh, self-entrepreneurs. And these people when they come up, with the novel ideas, if that is feasible, and the venture capitals, which were mentioned by Dr. Madina just now, they come forward to see the quality of the ideas which they get here, and those will be funded by the people, uh, venture capitalists, and or even the financiers to establish the industry by the young entrepreneurs. This is what actually the comprehensive objective of establishing this uh, incubation center in the whole country. There are many, very few incubation centers in the country. It will give uh, guidance and also provide an opportunity and a facility for implementing the ideas because many people they have several ideas and uh, at this context I will tell you one particular example novel ideas how they are actually been very important prominent uh, one of the companies CEO in America when he has been attended one international conference in Hyderabad he was telling about the importance of novel ideas 
when he was actually uh, thinking about how people are going to abroad, yes, every year people are just rushing to abroad, and they are struggling there for several years to get green card and citizenship. Why not I apply green card with my abilities and thinking of uh, my uh, experience? Uh, so he went to immigration side of America and he just logged into that. And he found one of the points there in the immigration side of America that anyone who feels that they are useful to con country of America, they can apply for immigration. So under that class, he has presented his uh, biodata and he got immigration within a period of six months, which was actually, we struggled several years to get immigration in America by many people who went as students and they worked several years, but he just got uh, uh, immigration within six months by just applying directly uh, with the, uh, thinking that he is very much useful and his ideas are going to be very much useful. Not only that, he, he just went to America and he, he landed there and he went to a party in the evening the next day when he went there and he was talking to many people uh, in a particular uh, function and one of the person was asking him why you came to America, what are the, your ideas, why you want to come to America, what is the uh, objective behind coming to America that he was asked by one of the person. And he was telling that this is my idea, I want to do this, I want to have this kind of uh, approach for developing something in uh, uh, America like that he was talking to him. Immediately the opposite person took checkbook and he gave one lakh dollars advance to him and uh, he gave that particular person, uh, are you ready to work with me, he asked him. So this man got surprised why he was giving one lakh dollars and giving uh, offer to me. He asked the same question to him also. Then he replied, you got noble ideas, your innovative thinking is useful to me. So that innovative thinking is enough for me to work in my industry. So that kind of innovative thinking, if anybody has, how we are going to do that, that is my lookout. I will provide the facility and your ideas can be implemented in our company. So you are ready to work, I will give employment, everything facility here and per month I give uh, some amount of dollars he told and at once he has given more land. So he immediately joined in that company and he became eventually the CEO of the company. So what he was trying to tell every young entrepreneurs and young students that innovative ideas and your novel thinking will be helpful to get company or get some kind of entrepreneurship training in our uh, company like that he was telling. So this is the reason why we are actually thinking of even introducing gap year concept in our engineering school in the next coming years. Gap year means what we are planning is our engineering students can go to any industry for training for one year period and they work in a company after second year or third year and they come back to the uh, particular uh, university and they continue their studies final year. And that gap year period which he does in a particular industry, he, after he completes BTEC, he will become entrepreneur, self-entrepreneur. This is what actually a concept which we are trying to do. So this is one of the ideas and one of the approach for developing entrepreneurship in the youth this incubation center, the pe anybody can approach incubation center coordinator, CEO, that he is interested to work in a particular area. And those people will be provided facility here to work in that particular area of the research which he is interested, or development of process in which he is interested. That will be given an opportunity for the people to bring out their talent uh, ideas, and they can implement that. And those ideas, we are also providing facility here to bring the financiers and venture capitalists also to come together to help the entrepreneurs. This is what actually the concept of the DST Incubation Center. And we have several schools here, students from different faculties like School of Engineering, School of Life Sciences, School of Physical Sciences, School of uh, Humanities, School of Social Sciences and School of Architecture and Design. These students actually, the young students, we provide this facility when they join in the university and we tell them there is an incubation center facility in our university. The students who are interested to go and work that, apart from the education, regular curriculum, they can go and work in the incubation center and they can bring out the talent. This is what actually. Mizoram is very much uh, required the people who are with innovative ideas and uh, entrepreneurs. Because a lot of entrepreneurs should come from Mizoram University and that will be going to be the boom for the Mizoram state. This is what our idea said. And we are practicing several things like this and we try to do with your kind blessings and wishes and we will definitely extend this cooperation to the people of Mizoram and we will make this a dream of Mizoram very soon, reality. Sir, thank you very much for your kind uh, uh, blessings and uh, gracious uh, visit to our university and uh, inaugurating our incubation center here and we will, def we will definitely develop some more 
things like this very soon with the help of all our faculty. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring speech. Uh, I may now request our Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Kumaran Rajasekran, the Governor of Mizoram and the Chief Rector of Mizoram University, to address the gathering. Thank you so much, sir, for inaugurating the Commission Center. Good morning to all. Dear Professor, dear Sabashi Rao, West Hampton, Mizoram University. CEO, coordinator, and personal of the Innovation Center, officials of Missouri University Innovation Center, ladies and gentlemen, media friends. I feel proud and privileged to inaugurate the Missouri University Innovation Center along with the bright and brilliant youngsters of this prestigious institution. Missouri University is the pride of Missouri. And I am sure will soon become the pride of India. I wish and pray that the students and faculty here will bring laurels to themselves and glory to the nation. I also congratulate the team which has brought about the successful inauguration of this seminar, which I am certain will be of immense value to Missouri and the entire region. As Aristotle said, education is an ornament in prosperity and a refuge in adversity. This reminds me of the poor proverb, do not put off till tomorrow what you can do today. I would like to read this with yet another dictum. The right path is very steep upward, whereas the wrong path is horizontal. What do these teachers educate ourselves here and now, but follow the right path of knowledge to reach the peak of innovation? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us come for a reality check. Being a central university and a center for excellence, I have no hesitation to say that India's destiny depends upon the quality of our entrepreneurs and the way they build themselves for the future of our country. India, which was very backward industrially at the dawn of independence, has today made quantum leaps in the sectors of manufacturing, engineering, information and communication technology, agriculture, and allied activities, and is confidently inviting the world to make in India. Entrepreneurship has become a buzzword of the present India. Entrepreneurship introduces a critical element of dynamism into an economic system. The process of globalization and globalization has introduced a set of changes like the introduction of dynamism into the system through the process of globalization. In a way, to compare this concept of change to modern entrepreneurship, villages would be called as organization and the craftsmen would be termed as entrepreneur. Independent India could claim to have created a conductive climate for spread of entrepreneurship. It is in this broad backdrop that the later evolution and growth of Indian entrepreneurship has to be located. The need of innovation in entrepreneurship cannot be stressed enough. The new generation, particularly the student and the entrepreneurship community, is living in a highly competitive environment, facing all the challenges of the brave new world emerging in the global village. As Lewis Carroll says in Alice in Wonderworld, he says, My dear, here we must run as fast as we can just to stay in place. As they say, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. The new generation has no time to waste, no reason to relax when the world is going in a hectically fast pace. Remember that 
the sleeping rabbit will lose out to the advancing herd. Our efforts have to keep pace with the best in the world. We have to have a higher benchmark for educational standards. Innovation is, in fact, the life essence of entrepreneurship. Without it, all activities of entrepreneurship become obsolete. In countries like India, with the 700 million at bottom of the pyramid population, the need for innovations that meet the unique needs of this population is seriously sought for. Innovations that answer the immediate and local need of the population is like a breath of fresh air, ever sought for and precious. The nation urges entrepreneurs to explore domestic opportunities to succeed. One needs to continuously innovate. Technology has become a crucial and critical driver in the future of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs have the chance to do both strategic planning and administrative work for their business. They can get involved in all sides of their business because the internet makes it possible to do so. The future of entrepreneurship could involve high performing entrepreneurs rather than people working for huge faceless organizations. The internet and especially social media tools make it possible to turn passion into a thriving business and that anyone can create a personal brand and leverage it worldwide through technology. Social media, for instance, is indispensable to any business in any industry as it offers a range of business benefits for both internally within a company and externally between a company and other nodes of business such as clients or suppliers. It will also move from an era of multinational business to one of the global small business. This means that anyone, wherever that person is located, can build a successful business if online tools are properly optimized. The philosophy of an incubation center is opportune to fit whatever gap that may be present. Family owned businesses running these smaller businesses tend to succeed even with breeding new generations, basically due to the hand holding and mentoring offered by the old generation. The incubation center does just that. Taking the expertise offered by the host institution and vendors for guidance, the concept of incubator is, is a warm, fertile bed for growth of sapling entrepreneurs. The Russian writer, Tarjine, had a touching experience in his life. It was chilling winter. Tarjine went for his morning stroll. He met a beggar on the way. The beggar was shivering in the extreme cold. He had no warm clothes on him. Tarjanev took pity on him and wanted to give him a ruble. When he searched his pocket, he found no money in it. But the beggar's hope was arose. Tarjanev held the hands on the beggar and told him, Brother, I wanted to give you a ruble but do not have even a corporate with me. With tears in his eyes, the beggar said, Sir, you have called me brother. There is no greater gift for me. My dear young friends, education does not mean the degree you get. Education means the degree of kindness which you are capable of showing to the man on the street. Education does not have a full stop. It flows endlessly throughout your life, acquiring, enjoying, and experiencing the lessons from the society. The idea of business incubator encompasses all these dimensions. I do hope the Missouri University Incubation Center will step in as vanguard of innovative entities, entities evolving into startups and eventually startups moving towards drivers of economic growth, not only for the state of Missouri, but for the entire nation.
I once again congratulate everyone involved in the successful inauguration of the incubation center. Wish you all the best for blessing. Thank you very much. Naomi. Thank you so much, sir, for your inspiring and thought-provoking speech. Yes. Mission of Honorable uh, His Excellency, I just wanted to announce one uh, uh, point here uh, in front of everyone because it carries some information to the public. Uh, because uh, Honorable Governor hails from Kerala, which is one of the biggest state in literacy and uh, has 100 percent literacy in uh, India, and it is well known for education system. And he being uh, uh, came here as Governor of Gujarat. Uh, so he went, when he went to Kerala and he was uh, talking to some people uh, in an uh, academic uh, platform, he was talking to the Mijaram uh, 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 students and the welfare to the public in Kerala. He was offering, uh, he was uh, inviting people to provide education to Mijaram and opportunity for Mijaram students. So one of the colleagues in uh, Kerala has come forward and offered free education to 120 students of, from Mijaram. So please communicate this to all. Publicized in Mizoram governor's website also. Those uh, two people who are in Mizoram, they can go to Kerala and have free education for all four years. This is what actually the college came for. But free education, fees and everything is free education. So okay. kindly propagate this to your WhatsApp uh, and through our social media to all the people of Mizoram, particularly for poor people who are interested to go for education in Kerala. So thank you very much, sir, for providing an opportunity to announce this. Thank you. Indeed, a wonderful news. Thank you, sir. Uh, when at the end of the program, our honorable chief guests, along with the vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, and the statutory officers, may kindly go to the vice chancellor's room for a snack, and the rest of us will stay back for a refreshment. Now, I call upon the chief executive officer of Missouri University Incubation Center. Who KC Zoramwara to propose the vote of thanks? As the function is going to move and then on behalf of the organizing committee, I'd like to convey sincere thanks to His Excellency Umanam Sekhara, the governor of Mizoram, for his warm presence with us today here inaugurating Mizoram University Incubation Center. This inauguration was the first scheduled 19 of last month. With the then governor as a chief guest. But Due to, we have to defer to that due to uh, transfer and posting of government. We therefore extremely happy with the new governor as we learn that he promptly accorded our desires despite his transitional and tight schedule. <coughs> thank you, sir. Uh, I thank all his entourage uh, accompanying him here today. And it is a privilege for me to thank <coughs> Professor K. R. N. Sampasiva Rao, the Vice Chancellor of Mizoram University. He is, who, uh, he is also the chairman of the governing board of this incubation center. I thank him for his endless support and consistent commitment 
I'm always showing enthusiasm towards the children. It is fortunate for us to have him, a man like him, a man with vision, a hard, a hard working man as a vision. I thank the province, all the academicians, faculties, statutory officers of these universities and staff who assembled here to witness the inauguration. It is also a pleasure for me to have met our respective invitees coming from uh, Ijeol and all. Uh, some of them are our incubators and aspirant entrepreneur. I thank them for making today joining us here. <coughs> and I must take this opportunity to thank all the members of steering committee of incubation center. They do deserve to name them individual, individually, but I will not permit their contribution is so significant. Their diverse knowledge, immense expertise, and the uh, amount of uh, time they devoted for setting up of this center apart from their normal duty. These are very much worth mentioning and remarkable. They inculcate a good work culture in this center. The work, their work as an individual and as a deep as well is appreciated and commendable. And for the last, but not the least, I am very thankful to all my colleagues who always cheerfully accept whatever assignment given to them for the successful organizing of this organization. That is all, Sarah, for the next one.